This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what do you want by dialing toll-free at 800-259-9231. That's the SACL CAI toll-free line. 800-259-9231. Tonight, it's Ian with you. And Nick. And Mark. You can join us on our website. We give you all the features there, free, including live streams. We've got a webcam. There's also a broadband audio version and a dial-up audio version of the show. You can go and enjoy all of that for free, of course, at Listen. Dot freetalklive.com. That's listen.freetalklive.com. And for more great listening, head over to audiblepodcast.com slash FTL. Audible is the Internet's leading provider of spoken audio entertainment. You can listen whenever and wherever you want, just like a podcast. They have over 60,000 titles from which to choose at audiblepodcast.com slash FTL. Now, you add the slash FTL to get yourself a free audiobook. In every genre, Audible has it covered. So get your free audiobook download when you sign up today by going to audiblepodcast.com dot com slash ftl like an audible podcast dot com slash ftl as we continue here mark you're telling us a story from the federal level about some it started out being about a couple of uh, people in their 60s septuagenarians i believe um Se- no septuagen- sept- seven. Sept- septuagenarian would be a 70 year old so. sex to shoot i looked this one up before and i don't remember what it is yeah Okay, well, anyway. No one uses it, I can tell you that. Right. People yeah. in their... People... I'm just trying to be a sesqu- uh, sesquipedalian. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like a moron. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, a couple of folks in their 60s were uh, targeted by the federal government because they were dealing in orchids. That's right. Flowers. Apparently, they didn't cross the right T's or dot the right I's. I imagine it's the importing is what sounds like right. it was the problem here. Right, so uh, so that so that something came over an imaginary line in the sand or in the water, and uh, the federal government decided to target them, raid their home, turn it upside down, inside out, empty out all the drawers, just destroy everything they possibly could uh, as far as the order of the home in an entire half day's time, and then of course they leave it like that because that's just the way they do things. So, but that's not the only uh, story. This particular. I guess what you're telling us it has in it, right, Mark? Well, it's, it's, tell it's us about the story is really about a, a Senate hearing that's going on to find out whether or not the federal government has made too many laws, hmm. which is just hilarious. Right, to they me. need a hearing for that apparently <laughs> to ascertain. They need that. to get the lawmakers there in order to decide whether or not they're making too many laws. But right. going on, this is talking about a different gentleman, and um, I'm going to you know, backtrack just a little bit. The feds prosecuted Mr. Evertson the first time for failing to put a federally mandated sticker on an otherwise lawful UPS package in which he shipped some of his supplies to uh, create clean energy fuel cells. A jury acquitted him, so the feds brought new charges. Hmm. This time they claimed that he had technically had abandoned his fuel cell materials, something he had no intention of doing, while defending himself against the first charges. So they took the stuff in evidence, and then he abandoned it. And then they charged him for that. So because they had it, they called that abandoned? Because that he wasn't trying to, be to get the situation. it back. Was it because he wasn't trying to get them back actively or something? I don't. I, I you know. I, I don't have the specifics here on this, but I can tell you that. Uh, so these are chemicals. He that spent it's... two years in federal prison for it. Wow. Amazing. George Washington uh, University law professor Stephen. Aren't you glad you pay taxes? <laughs> it's got to be kind of tough. Stephen Salzberg testified at the uh, House hearing. Cases like these. Illustrate about as well as you can illustrate the overreach of federal criminal law. The Cato Institute's Timothy Lynch, an expert in overcriminalization, called for a clean line between lawful conduct and unlawful conduct. That would sure be nice. A person should not be deemed a criminal unless that person crossed over that line knowing that he or she was doing. Seems like common sense, but apparently it isn't. And some, um, and um, it isn't to some federal officials. Former U.S. Attorney. General Richard Thornburg's testimony, also known as Dick, <laughs> captured the essence of the problems that worry so many criminal experts. Those of us concerned about this subject, he testifies, share a common goal to have criminal statutes that punish actual criminal acts and that do not seek to criminalize conduct that is better dealt with by seeking of regulatory or civil remedies. Only when the conduct is sufficiently wrongful and severe, Mr. Thornburg um, said, does it warrant the stigma, public condemnation, and potential deprivation of liberty that go along with the criminal sanction. I have an idea as to where the line should be. I mean, they're talking about drawing a line yes. and making sure that you know they, they're absolutely certain it's been crossed. How about the line is when there's a victim? We're all victims. What do you mean by that? Well, these people getting in there... Orchids and their fuel cell materials, they endangered us all. Victimizing the nation? 
Yes, I see. The Norris's nightmare. I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. The Norris's nightmare began with the search in October 2003. It didn't end until Mr. Norris was released from federal supervision in December 2008. So Norris did go five years. So he wait supervision is that the same as being in a federal prison? It, his his um he was the supervision probably wasn't the same as the the prison time. He probably got some of both. His wife t- testified, however, that even after he came home, the man she had married was still gone. Aww. He was by then 71 years old, unsurprisingly having t- served two years as a federal convict, so in addition in to prison. the years it took to uh, defend unsuccessfully against the charges, had taken a severe ah. toll on him mentally, emotionally, and physically. These repressive consequences for an er- elderly man who made mistakes in a small business, they, they call these mistakes. mistakes. I don't even call them that. The feds should be ashamed, and Mr. Everson is right that everyone else should be scared. Damn right, exactly right. Far too right. many federal laws are far too broad. You know, there is this big conversation that's going on right now on uh, Freekeen.com, and there, there's an article about these folks that were protesting the cannabis celebrations going on here in Keene on a daily basis. Some protesters came down to protest against the cannabis celebrations, mm-hmm. and there's this lengthy conversation in there about, you know, the usual cliches of, well, the law is the law. It's illegal. And, of course, people are asking questions about, well, what about Rosa Parks? Should she just have sat in the back of the bus? Uh, what about, you know, the... the the Underground Railroad, should they have not have been uh, been doing that because the law is the law? Shouldn't they have been working through the system? And it's just it's just stunning uh, what is going on out there. These people believe, these people that are claiming things like, well, it's the law. You should obey the law until you can change it. These people really believe that they're immune. They believe they are law-abiding people and that the law is never going to criminalize something they're doing. They, they're so confident that what they do on a day-to-day basis doesn't violate any sort of federal, state, or local laws. They really they, and truly believe I'm that. I'm sure these Norris, the, the Norrises here believed that, too. Absolutely. And this is the thing is there are there's stories like this over and over again. And the part that they don't mention in this, when the SWAT team was in there in Ms. Norris's house ransacking her place and throwing her all of her papers on the floor in full SWAT gear with full SWAT weaponry. Mm-hmm. They over don't, orchids. They don't, yeah, over orchids. They don't remind you of the story of out of Virginia where the optometrist was running a football pool in his office. That's illegal and, gambling. And the SWAT team came in and when they had him on the ground, handcuffed, on his hands on his knees, I mm-hmm. should say, handcuffed with his hands behind his back. Because that's how a gambling organizer should be treated. Point One of these at him. sick psychopaths shot him in the back of the head by accident. Oopsie. Now I don't know I, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he meant to do it. I don't know. But I can tell you that guy didn't go to prison for it. Maybe he, he didn't just go his... to prison because he had a man on his knees and shot him in the back of the head. A doctor who went to school for years and He's years criminal, and was Mark. providing an actual service criminal. to the community. This slug Violent. shot him in the back of the head. He's a dangerous criminal and he deserved it. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I, People I, that break the law deserve to be shot in the head. Apparently they do. Well, isn't that really what the issue is? I mean, when it, when it comes down to it. Anything that's illegal, eventually you are saying, if you want something criminalized, you're saying you think people should be killed over this. Because if they don't go along with the jail sentence, and if they don't go along with cooperating, then the the guns are going to come out. And if they still don't go along with it and they continue to resist the, uh, the state when they're trying to put them in a prison cell for selling orchids, then they will be shot. Should people be killed over 